Okay, so good evening everyone. I am Gabriele Tocchetti from Naples, Italy, I'm a Associate Professor of Medicine. And the topic of my talk will cover uh, how translational research can affect uh, the therapeutic strategies for uh, the treatment of heart failure. Uh, so the 90s have seen the uh, entrance into the clinical practice of many compounds which are uh, very efficacious in treating heart failure. But since 1999, not real uh, novel drug has entered the market. So somehow uh, there's been a stoppage. That's because heart failure is a very complex syndrome and it's very tough to characterize it completely. Uh, I would say that the main characteristics are the alterations of the elevations of the adrenergic system and of the renin angiotensin aldosterone since the rust system uh, and this somehow has been antagonized by the current therapeutic strategies and um, when you want to treat uh, a patient with heart failure you have several options so you can uh, stimulate the anotropy or you can unload uh, the heart and most likely uh, uh, that's a very good option uh, because right now we uh, currently use diuretics, ACE inhibitors you can use beta blockers or rivabradin to slow the heart and this has been proven to be very beneficial of course you can uh, uh, have a transplant or have a VAD which of course it means that you haven't been so successful in treating heart failure or you can heal the heart uh, healing the heart is tough because, because again uh, heart failure is, is a complex syndrome and hitting there is no magic bullet that can treat all the parts of heart failure altogether. So we focused on the sarcomeric parts and the calcium cycling parts, which we think is a very targetable, uh, they're very targetable molecules to improve uh, inotropy, not with uh, legacy inotropes like, like beta blockers or, you know, which activate the cyclic AMP signaling. Uh, after all, it will become toxic for the heart, leading to uh, calcium entrance, calcium overload, uh, and um, arrhythmias, and the negative effects of calcium as a second messenger, like activation of cancanis 2 and activation in calmodulin, and all the calcineurin uh, pathway and hypertrophic pathway. So we don't want that. We have to develop different strategies. One could be uh, promote the growth of new vessels, or uh, we could target fibrosis, uh, or we could target the apoptotic machinery. So we think that all these are good strategies. Uh, of course, uh, when we wrote this paper in 2014, uh, it, we were writing it one, the uh, novel uh, naprilysin inhibitor and uh, uh, an, uh, angiotensin blocker uh, came out. And this is definitely better than, than an alapril. It has been proven to be better because you also block the RAS and you elevate the levels of natriuretic peptides as you sure beneficial for the heart. Now the point is that um, there is still a broad gap of mortality and cardiovascular hospitalizations that need to be addressed. So how can we address it pharmacologically? Uh, what are the mainstream research uh, uh, lines right now that, that are um, focusing on heart failure research? So I would say that the effects of relaxin can be exploited. It's a novel molecule which resembles the relaxin, which is actually a peptide that's synthesized and released by the uh, inguinal ligament uh, by pregnant women that they have to deliver. So it somehow uh, unloads the muscle and it works through an NO-dependent mechanism. So perfect, to couldn't give vaso vasorelaxation and it can unload the heart the diastolic properties. It's a little bit neuregulin, uh, also exploits the NO signaling to uh, promote uh, survival it pro and it counters apoptosis. Uh, it has been very important uh, mechanism discovered a little bit by oncologists actually because trastuzumab that binds the RB2 uh, receptor uh, can um, actually uh, uncover the, the importance of RB2 in the heart. So neuregulin is used in uh, clinical trials uh, as well. Uh, 
uh, other clinical trials that are now going on with some of the molecules, uh, we can recouple the mitochondria if there is too less at ATP, and so we can target the mitochondria or we can target the calcium uh, uh, cycling in the, in the heart with HNO, with nitroxyl donors, which also affect the myofilament calcium sensitivity, so there are clinical trials with that. And there are clinical trials also with another inotropic drug, which is omecantib, which is a somehow, it prolongs uh, the ejection time con opposite to the butamine, and it modifies the myofilament so that they have, there is a stronger, uh, again, ejection, the actomyosin um, connection is, is tougher. So we think that these are, you know, good inotropes which do not work through the cyclic AMP signaling and can be promising uh, in treating heart failure. With this, I thank you very much. Mm -hmm.